coronavirus vaccine. The greatest scientific achievement since the development of that secret face cream that Paul Rudd uses to stay young. What is he using? And thankfully, soon even more Americans will be able to get their hands on this miracle vaccine. The FDA could expand COVID vaccines for 12 to 15 year olds as early as this week. Health experts say any day now, the agency is expected to authorize Pfizer's drug for that younger age group. The decision would allow middle school students and all high school students to get the shots. Pfizer says clinical trials showed the vaccine was, get this, 100% effective for 12 to 15 year olds that have that good immunity. If authorized, that age group may start receiving the Pfizer vaccine later this month. Wow, what great news. This is gonna be a huge step forward for kids who are sick of Zoom class and want to get back to being sick of actual class. And let's be honest, this can't come soon enough, man. I mean, it is so important for the young population to get re-engaged in society. And it's so important for my self-confidence to have five hours in the day when I'm not getting my ass handed to me by some nine-year-old on Warzone. Go to school, Jimmy, and stop camping me, you ass. But the important thing, is that this vaccine will allow teenagers to go back to doing normal teenager stuff again. You know, like going to school, seeing their friends, getting Venmoed by Matt Gates. you know, the teenager life. Our next ray of sunshine comes to us from the world of politics. Yesterday, President Biden took a break from looking for a White House cat for his dog Major to rip apart and went down to Georgia, where he and the first lady met up with their oldest and most adorable predecessors. We wanna show you this photo from the Carter Center. This was the visit of President Biden uh, and Dr. Jill Biden with Jimmy and Rosalind Carter in Georgia last week. The former president is 96, the first lady 93, and Brianna, they're gonna celebrate their 75th wedding anniversary in July. That's amazing, 75 years. It's great to see this photo. <laughs> okay, guys, I mean, don't get me wrong. I'm really happy to see these people all together and smiling and everything. It's just, what the f is going on in this photo? Like, why do the Bidens look five times bigger than the Carters? Is there some dollhouse filter that I didn't know about? Because I've been staring at this thing the whole day and I still can't figure out what's going on. I can't figure out if the Bidens had a late growth spurt or if they're playing with Jimmy Carter action figures or maybe both at the same time. Like, like what were the photographer's instructions here? All right, guys, we're gonna do a normal one and then we're gonna do a goofy one and then we're gonna do one where it looks like you're from two separate dimensions. Yeah, we good? Honestly, this is the weirdest picture of a president since, well, any picture of Donald Trump. But I'm not hating, please don't get me wrong. I think it is great to see presidents of different generations coming together to make me think that I'm on shrooms. But let's move on now from the president to the fresh prince, who's apparently having size issues of his own. Quarantine and the pandemic put many 2020 health goals on pause and Will Smith, was not immune either. The Fresh Prince made headlines after posting this shirtless photo on Instagram, along with the caption, quote, I'm gonna be real with y'all, I am in the worst shape of my life. <laughs> the actor was quickly praised for his brutal honesty by fans and fellow celebrities. Okay, you know what? I was pissed off at COVID before, but now it has gone too far. You made Will Smith have slightly less abs? Damn you, COVID! But at the same time, this is refreshing to see. Because let's be honest, man, so many people lie on social media about how their bodies actually look. And we all know who I'm referring to, right? The ones who Photoshop everything and cause other people to feel like their bodies don't measure up. I mean, do I need to say their name? Okay, fine. I'm calling you out, jacked kangaroo. You gave me dysmorphia. Oh, and by the way, I don't care what Will Smith says. This is not him at his worst. We've seen him at his worst. To be honest, Will Smith doesn't even look that bad. I bet you if he sets aside just 10 minutes a day doing the Carlton, he'll be back in shape before the summer. Oh, and by the way, Will Smith, thanks for making me and tons of other people feel like shit. He's like, this is the worst of my body. That's the best body some of us will ever have. Now, everyone is sharing Will Smith's Instagram today, but I mean, the truth is pictures have been going viral since the dawn of time. And now, one little girl who became a meme years ago is finally cashing in on that fame. The so-called disaster girl in a worldwide meme is selling the picture for a whole lot of money. Zoe Roth is selling this original image of her meme as an NFT for close to half 
$1.5 million. Photo was taken back in 2005 by her father. She is now 21, by the way. The meme has been shared tens of millions of times. She says she will split the profits with her family. God damn, half a million dollars? Man. Somebody get me a camera and a pack of matches because I miss Bitcoin, but I'm not missing out on this. And you know what? Good for her. People whose images are shared by millions across the internet, well, it would be nice if they got something out of it. In fact, I know one guy who saw the story and he was like, well, that gives me an idea. Still, if you ask me, I think people are way too into memes. I mean, they're all so corny and overused and it's crazy that someone paid half a million dollars for one. But you know what? That's none of my business. But let's move on to another cool, fun internet story. Last year, when the pandemic started, a guy named Josh sent a Facebook message to a bunch of other guys named Josh, challenging them all <laughs> to a fight in one year's time. And unlike most of us who can't even keep plans we made earlier in the day, these guys actually followed through on it. What's in a name? Well, just ask Josh or ask all of them who gathered in Lincoln, Nebraska for a pool noodle brawl. Three, two, one, two. A guy named Josh created a Josh fight at the start of the pandemic and then challenged all Josh's to a duel. The event got the attention of Josh's from all over the nation, but the winner of the friendly fight was the smallest Josh of them all. Four-year-old Josh was honored with a paper crown and bragging rights. Aww, congrats to little Josh for winning that Josh fight. And condolences to the family of Josh Groban, who that child beat into a coma. No, but seriously, it is, it's really cool to see Joshes from all around the country coming together to have some harmless fun. You know, usually when that many Joshes are in the same place, the only thing that comes out of it is what, a hedge fund? And you know, that's one of the cool things about the internet is that it lets these kind of events happen organically, you know, for no reason at all. Well, I mean, it's either that, or maybe this was actually a giant undercover operation to capture Josh Duggar. Either way, it worked. And you know, after watching this, I realized that we need to crown a champion for every name. Because too often, I meet someone, like say, my neighbor Steve, and I think to myself, is this the best Steve I could be talking to? I mean, I have limited time in my life. Am I gonna spend it on some subpar Steve? Yeah, I'm talking about you again. Yeah, you wanna make noise at night, you think I'm not gonna talk about you on my show? The only name you couldn't try this with is Karen. Yeah, don't ever try create a Karen fight. A Karen fight will be much less fun. All right, is everybody ready? All right, let's do this. Three, two, one, go. Hello, police. I'm in a field. Come help. 911, come quickly. Someone is calling the cops on me. Everyone is on their phone and I'm scared. You get down here right now or I'm going to sue the city. And finally, there's a lot of things that we waste in our everyday lives. We waste food. We waste brain cells. We waste time DMing T-Pain when he's never gonna read it. But at least now, we can start wasting a little less toothpaste. And a toothpaste breakthrough. Uh, new this morning, Colgate is partnering with a Boston-based company on a coating that is designed to get every last drop of toothpaste out of the tube. Liquid Glide helped develop this slippery coating technology. Right now, it's only found inside Colgate's Elixir toothpaste. According to Liquid Glide, up to 13% of toothpaste is wasted in every tube. Now this, this is amazing. What a terrific idea that I'm sure won't give us cancer by accident. And I'm glad that toothpaste isn't going to waste anymore. I mean, not that it's gonna make a difference for me, because let me tell you something. When you grow up poor, you are used to using every last damn drop of the toothpaste. You're squeezing it, you're cutting it open, you're scooping it out with your finger and rubbing it on your teeth like it's fluoride cocaine. And when all the toothpaste is gone, you just brush your teeth with the tube itself. But what is great news is that they're using this technology in all kinds of products now, like ketchup bottles, which I personally am so happy to hear. Because I don't know about you guys, but I am tired of giving my ketchup an ass whooping just so I can dip my french fries. This hurts me way more than it hurts you. No, really, it hurts me way more. 